Sales training day two. Sales training day two. Woo. I'm going to wait for a couple of people to come on. And then we're going to talk. We're going to train. We're going to learn. It's going to be awesome. <clears throat> Big topic tonight. Hi, Megan. You're the best. Thanks for jumping on Instagram. Sorry I couldn't see you last week, but we'll make it up. Hi, Michael. Thanks for joining. We're going to start here in about a minute or less. Let's let a few more folks come on. Tonight, we are going to talk about showing your value. We're going to get started in about 60 seconds. It's going to be awesome. Got some people jumping on Instagram. Got some people jumping on Facebook. We will start here in about 30 seconds. Just waiting for a few more folks to jump on to catch the live. And if you're watching replay, thanks for watching the replay. It's going to be good tonight. If you missed last night, that was good too. This night, going to bring the thunder. How to show your value in your sales strategy. It's going to be good. All right, <clears throat> I think we're good. So last night we talked about how to know your value in your sales. And one thing that I wanted to add on to that <clears throat> that will flow into tonight. And, and again, this is, this is sales training. So who is this for tonight? This is for people, if you sell a product, or a service, and it's B2B, it's business to business. Small, medium, large, enterprise, business, this all works. This is for you. If you're a salesperson, this, is work, this works for you. If you're a sales leader, this definitely works for you. You can teach this with your teams. And if, it's, if you're not in any of that, so people it's not for, it's folks for, if you just do like e-commerce, drop shipping, um, funnels online, all that's cool. This just may not apply exactly the same way. So just, just a heads up, if that's you, you may not benefit as much as the other folks, but just wanted to make that super clear before we start. So one thing about last night that I wanted to add into this night, so we go from showing your, knowing your value to showing your value, is most salespeople make the common mistake of just pitching all the time. They just say, hey, I do this, I have this product, I have this service, would you like to buy from me today? It's like going door to door with Girl Scout cookies, except we're not Girl Scouts and we're not small and, and we don't have Girl Scout cookies that taste really good. So it probably won't work for you. So you need a different strategy. <laughs> and by the way, it could work for you if that's your strategy and that's all you do is just call people and say, hey, this is what I do, do you need this? You can do that, but just recognize that you're probably only going to get business maybe 1% to 3% of the time. So you better be making a lot of calls if that's all you do. Because the reality of the world is, and if you check different stats out there, they have different numbers, but it's usually anywhere between 3 to 10% of the market that you serve is right now ready to buy, needs it today. Urgent, probably needed it yesterday or a week ago, and you're, you're already a little bit too late. Three to 10% is that buying hot seat. The rest of, of the market that you serve or want to serve, they're not buying right now. They're not buying. 30% are thinking about it, but they may not buy today. You could flip it. You could push them to buy today if you get their attention and you show your value, which we'll talk about in a second. But the other 70%, they're either they're not interested at all in what you do, <clears throat> They're never going to buy from you ever because they just, they like someone else. They're, they have a preferred preference that someone else is better than for whatever reason. They don't care. They don't want to listen to you. Um, or they, they have no use or need for what you actually do, even though you think they do. So 70% of the people will never, will never probably use you. So why am I telling you that? Because you need to think about your sales funnel and your sales process as a numbers game. <clears throat> you hear that all the time. And you read it in books, you read it in articles, but the reality is it's just true. 
Like if you want to get a deal in the next week, you can't call 10 people. It just won't work. You can't call 20 people. 100 people, maybe. Maybe 100, you might, you might get somewhere. But you got you to gotta make your numbers bigger, okay? You got to take massive action every single day to get enough in the pipeline that you can work with because you got to remember that those percentages are real. That is proven stats, okay? In any industry, you're not going to get much better than that, right? So that's what you're dealing with. Now, how can we leverage that small percentage to want to work with you, all right? So the first thing you need to be clear on in showing your value is you need to know how to solve their problem. If you don't know how to solve their problem, then the chances are they may not hear your value and they may just, it might just go right over their head and they'll move on to the next vendor or service provider that's calling them and, and they'll give them a shot. So what do I mean by solving their problem? How do you know that? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to understand in their words, <clears throat> what is their actual problem? It's not what you think it is. It's not what you're going to give them or what your service can do to make them better. That's all features, benefits, results. That's all you. The, the key to showing your value effectively is you need to meet them where they're at, not where you are, and not where you want to be. So you gotta, you gotta kind of think about this for a second. If you've never done this before, it, it, it'll take some practice, but the best way to do this, and we talked about this last night, is just to interview your, your market. Interview your current clients, interview people in the market that you wanna serve and get their feedback on what are they dealing with? What's their challenge? And what do they need help on? And when you get that information, then you can start to understand one what their business challenges currently are and maybe your service or solution or your product is like 10 to 15 on the list it may not even be in the top 10. you got to know that because you either you either need to realize that that you're not that important to that business at that time or you may need to think about a different way to position your business higher up on their needs list so you can be more relevant and get their attention easier, which we'll get to in a second. Getting attention is massively important in your sales process and marketing process. So you need to get that information, okay? So how do you solve their problem? What is their problem? If you were to talk to someone and they were to, and they were to express what they're dealing with, you, they, need to, they need to say it in their words, not yours, okay? So once you understand what that, that is, then the next, the next step, so the second step is what is their ideal outcome? In their words, not yours. You're not, I know your ideal outcome is probably buy my stuff and we'll work together, but that, might, that may not mean anything to them. So you need to hear them say it of what do they want. If they invest with you or if they, if they, if they have their problem and, they, and you ask them what is their dream come true, what is their ideal result, to fix this problem, what would it look like? Whatever that answer is, that's the result that you need to figure out how to achieve. Now, maybe you can't do it. <clears throat> maybe that's not up your alley. Maybe that problem has nothing to do with you or your service or your company. That's okay. You know why? Because you're not jamming product or service down their throat. You're not pitching them when they don't need it. Because if you pitch them when they don't want it or need it and you keep trying, they're gonna repel and get away from you. They're not gonna be interested and they don't, no one likes to be pitched, right? But if you can reverse that a little bit and say, hey, okay, I think I understand what your problem is, repeat it back to them, make sure you've heard them right, and you, you wanna get this result, ideally, this is what you're looking for, is that right? Okay, cool, well, I actually have some references or some contacts I could give you that, that can do that for you, would you want, would you want some names and numbers? Different way, you're providing value, not through you and your service, but you're still providing value to help them solve their problem from your own network that you've built, from the knowledge that you have, from the, from the friends that you have, and they will appreciate that. If you've never done this before, 
Trust me, try it. If you can't serve them perfectly directly, help them indirectly, give them some help, and it'll go, it'll go a long way. They'll never forget it, I promise. Okay. But let's say that they do have the ideal result that you can provide. So then what you want to do in step three, if you can help them, is say, okay, <clears throat> well, what have you tried before? Because you have this problem, you want this. What have you done before to kind of fix this? Why is that question important? Because you need to know if this potential client that you're going to serve is actually serious and self-accountable to fixing their solution. We've all had not the best clients, right? And we've all had amazing clients, right? So we, we part of the screening process when you're showing your value is also making sure that you're going to mutually hire each other and have a good relationship because the last thing you want to do is is get the business and then their their expectations are way out of proportion for what you can give and and that relationship has no chance of of doing very well right so um you want to make sure that they've taken action before on trying to figure this out. And if they haven't, then dig deeper to be like, well, why not? Why is right now a pro why is this an issue to solve right now? Did this just come about or has it happened before? Chances are <clears throat> this problem they have has been there for a while. It's been there for a while. And it's good. It's good to know that you need to have some history behind what they've done. If you're a service provider or a product and, and you know from your market research, which we talked about last night, that the company you're talking to has used your typical your type of service before or your product, you want to know what that experience has been like, right? Wouldn't you want to know that? Because if you come in and, and you have that knowledge, then you know what, what you can do to over deliver, to create a better experience than what they've been used to. The only way you're going to find that out is if you ask them and right, you better, you rather ask than guess, right? So get that information. Okay. And then lastly, if, if they have the problem, they have the result that you can provide and you know, you can do it with integrity and you can get them that result, then offer close, close the deal. We'll talk about that more tomorrow too with closing. But I just wanted to go through kind of that process and that thought process of how you can prospect, qualify, pitch, close. And if you do all those steps, it should be fairly easy to, to get that deal if you, if you do it in that type of way. Um, because you're, you're doing something that's mutually beneficial for you and for them. And it's a good, it's a good match. You don't want to take clients that aren't a good match for you that you can't serve well because that will backfire on you 100% at some point down the road, okay? So, part B of showing your value, if that was part A, <clears throat> is you need to market yourself. One of the biggest things that I learned from some, some of my, my giant mentors in the space is that you're probably in obscurity right now. What does obscurity mean? It means that no one knows you. If, if you left tomorrow and didn't show up for business and no one's asking where you were, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. Think about that. If you didn't show up tomorrow and no one asked where you were in the marketplace, you didn't do enough. You're not marketing enough. You're not getting big enough. So <clears throat> that's a direct quote from Seth Godin, by the way, that I got from him meeting him two weeks ago. It's a big challenge, right? So what are you doing to show your value in the marketplace? Look at your competitors. Where are they spending time marketing their, their services or solutions? Is it on LinkedIn? Is it on Facebook? Is it in the newspaper? Is it on TV? Is it on the radio? Is it email direct marketing? What, what, is, what is your competition doing to market to the same business? You need to know that. You need to study that a little bit. And then you need to figure out what are your channels? Where can you be the best at marketing your business? And I would say 
no more than three out of everything. Like pick one, maximum three of channels that you want to just dominate and market your business in better than anybody else. So <clears throat> think about all, you have so many different options. You have, you know, social media, right? Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all different. YouTube, by the way, did you guys know that YouTube is the largest search engine in the world? It beats Google. It's bigger than Google. Did you know that? Google is the largest search engine in the entire world. It is the most powerful thing right now on our planet that searches stuff. If you're not on YouTube, you might want to consider getting your business on YouTube because it's huge. Just saying. Hi, Noreen. How you doing? So you have email marketing. You have, you have networking associations. You have speaking events. You have trade shows. What are the channels that you're using to get your funnel, your leads, and, and maximizing that channel distribution for getting attention? You got to get attention somewhere. If you try to do it everywhere, it's not going to work. I've tried it. Trust me, you want to you want to pick a couple places and just be the best. So, I want you to tonight as homework. If you're listening to this and thinking through your strategy, I want you to think through your channels that you're using marketing for, and I want you to pick one or two and and go all in on those channels for at least the next thirty days. I mean, we're we're, we're approaching December, guys. So, try this out until the end of the year and and see how it works for you. You'll see a difference. You just have to focus. Part of the reason why you're not seeing results is you have to focus more on smaller, more leverageable ways. So that's another thing. Social proof, part C, social proof. 92% of people make decisions and buy stuff because of social proof. What is social proof? Social proof is it works. People have had have used it and has success stories behind it. You have credibility. You are in those channels a lot and people see you all the time and, and they're, 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 they're seeing progress. They're seeing success. They're seeing your clients highlighted. So think about this. Your company has a brand. You also have a brand. The people that you work with, your clients know you, you represent your company, but you also have your own brand. And depending on what you do and your ability to execute and deliver value and service and business affects your personal brand and your company's brand, good or bad. But if you can show and start to build brand around you and, and be able to showcase your clients like, hey, Here's my client that I worked with last week and, or a month ago, and here's the results that they've seen, and you can show this to a new prospect. Here's a client from three months ago, six months ago, and you can show consistency in your results. Consistency, quantity, and, and repeatability, those are really powerful mechanisms of social proof to show your clients. Um, not, not necessarily in a meeting, you can do that in a meeting, which you should, but I'm talking about also when you're marketing. When you show and market what you do, give praise to your clients that are using your service. You know, ask for permission and make sure that's okay. But man, show show that your stuff works. I, I see so many businesses that don't do that. They just they just are posting on LinkedIn or they're posting on Facebook. They're saying, All right, I have this product or this service. If you're interested, sign up. Buy from me. I'm right here. That's never going to work, guys. No one's ever going to come to you that way. You have to, you have to meet them where they're at. You have to show them value through what it work, how it works, how it, what it would look like for them, and, and the way they can see what it would look like for them is to do two things. It's going back to the beginning of this video, and what I said is being able to speak in their language about what their problem is. Okay, so let's take. I was talking to a client of mine last night about this. So let's pretend that you're a fitness fitness trainer, okay? You're a fitness trainer you're in the health industry and you want to meet people where you're at. You can't go to your clients and say, I have the best food, uh, best meal plan, the best new fitness workout, the best this, the best that. 
that's all great. That's all features benefits. And you may even have success stories for that or whatever, but you need to meet them where they're at in their language. What does that mean? It means you need to, you need to talk about what they're dealing with right now. Like I don't want to start another workout plan because every time I do it, it fails or I get bored or it's too hard and I quit or my, my gym, I didn't like how I felt at the gym because I'm, I'm this way. And I felt like there was too many other people that are super crazy fit, fit over there. And I just didn't feel like I fit in. Like you need to figure out where, where your mind of your buyer is at and live in that with your language, with your marketing, how you talk to them and, and, and start there, not on this other side where you have all this great stuff that you can give them. No one can relate to that. <clears throat> They'll relate to it once they buy from you and then you can give them all that stuff. But until you get there, you got to live in their world. You got to speak their language. You are, you got to be the alien on their planet of where they're li- where they live and, and understand what they're, what they're dealing with and what they think about and talk that, you know, relate to them, relate, be relatable, be relatable. That might be the biggest takeaway from tonight is just be relatable with your prospects in your marketing language, in person, everything. So the last thing for tonight is I want to talk a little bit about your meeting. So when you get a meeting with your client, if you're in B2B, most of, most of the time it takes at least two meetings. If you're working on a big company, this is water. You need to have multiple meetings to get this deal done. And your sales cycle could be, you know, not a week or three months. It could be six to nine months, depending on the complexity of this, of this organization, right? So, but what I want to point out in your meeting tonight, when you're in that meeting, is how many times have you been in a meeting and you've got this amazing PowerPoint? You're going through your slides, you're talking about your stuff, and it's an hour meeting. And then by minute 50, minute 50, you're wrapping up. They're kind of like checking their watches. They're looking at the next meeting they got to get to. And then you ask your last slide, right? Your last slides, any questions? And then there's like maybe one. And then like, oh, we're out of time. We got to go. How many times has that happened to you? Or does that sound relevant to you? Well, I've done that too, right? When does the sale start? Biggest list, biggest thing, one of the biggest things I learned in corporate later in my career was sale don't start when you're pitching and you're doing PowerPoint slides. And to be honest with you, if you're just talking to the screen, you're not, you're not, you're not connecting to me. I, I would actually challenge you to have a really short PowerPoint a few slides, visual impact, but but take your eye contact and really focus on them in the meeting. You don't want to have them look over here the whole time because how many times have you all sat in webinars or PowerPoints and you spaced out like halfway through? It's so hard to get attention. Hey, Laura, it's so hard to keep that attention and that engagement, right? It's so much easier to do that when we're doing this. Mono we mono have that that conversation channel that energy so try that in your meetings I, I i think you'll see a difference with that but also recognize that the the meetings the sale of the meeting does not start until you ask you ask for the clothes you ask for the business why did why is that the start of the of the sale because everything you just set up to that point it doesn't really matter too much until you actually get them to give you feedback and in some type of response of what they're thinking. So you got to ask, what do you think? Or can we start now? And what are you, what are you going to get? Probably objections, right? Uh, we already have someone that does this. Uh, it's price is too high. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work. That's the beginning of your sale. And now your job is to handle and talk about those questions or those objections because that's the meat. Those are, those are, 
those are excuses or, or things that are just deflections of them not seeing clearly that this is the perfect solution for them. But it's down the right path. This is the, the, like objections are a really, really good sign. You never, if you never get objections to anything and you sell, that's kind of scary actually, because it's almost too easy. You want to, you want to have, you want them to object. You want them to engage. You want them to ask questions because they, that means they're thinking about their business and what this means for them. So tomorrow we're going to talk about how to close that sale and how to start creating some wins and, and getting some deals done in your, in your in your pipeline right now. So we're gonna go through some strategies tomorrow on how to condense your time of maybe what you thought could take a year or even half a year. And we're gonna talk about strategies tomorrow on how to truncate that and squeeze time where you can start closing some major deals in the next week, in the next month, no later than the next quarter, 90 days or less. So thank you for joining me tonight for this 30 minute training session. I hope it was able to give you some value. If you, if, you, if, if this did give you value tonight, um, the only thing I'd ask for tonight is just share it out. If, if you think this would help somebody that you know that's in, in business that, that's dealing with this kind of stuff, please, please um, feel free to share this out. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or feedback on this information I gave you tonight, I would love to hear how this was for you so I can better tailor my, my content for you next time. So thanks so much and have a good night.